Hi guys, I've just made a, a short video showing how to mix and use a factory cement. Uh, I couldn't quite fit enough detail in the video, so I was just adding a little bit extra at the beginning. I'd always advise for people to buy a factory cement, buy a commercial one if you can. I, I make my own because I've been using it in large quantities and I've been using it for many years and I found um, it's, it's, it's more economical for me to make my own. But always buy it if you can. Um, commercial products, they contain um, not only crushed fire brick and high temperature cement, they contain additives. Very often these are kept close to the manufacturer's chest, but basically they are going to be either metal um, needles, stainless steel needles, they're going to be um, burnout fibres which are made of some type of plastic that will, will burn out the low temperature. They're very, very fine little fibres. These form a matrix inside the, the end product and when it's heated, uh, the fibres will melt out and this allows uh, avenues and little channels for the steam to escape because steam is one of the main um, causes for the factory cracking. Um, and because the factory will absorb water, it does it naturally. Uh, it just absorbs it out of the air. And if you haven't used your fire or whatever you're, you're building for some time, it will suck in moisture from the air. And when you heat it up, it expands and you need to have some way to let that moisture escape. So, so, so the plastic fibers are quite important. We also use, or a lot, some people use the carbon fibers. Now these fibers have got a very, very high melt point. It's way over, I think it's over 2000 degrees centigrade and they help to stop the refractory components from breaking. But equally, if they do break, the fibers hold the components together, so it's not a complete disaster. Um, I tried to give as much information in my video, I just didn't have enough time to fit it all in. So I hope this little extra bit helps. I've made up two components, which when put together will form a mold to make a refractory um, cement component for my new Vortex rocket stove, which I'm going to build. So I've used roof insulation and I've covered the roof insulation with a black membrane, which means the refractory cement won't actually stick to it. So I've stuck the black membrane to the, um, the insulating foam with just silicon. Now I'm putting these inserts in here, which will become obvious in a minute, but basically I want to make um, four finished components. Um, the reason for making four components rather than doing it in one is to allow for expansion and contraction because um, refractory cement is prone to this. When it heats up, it will expand. So if you make smaller um, components, it's less likely to, to be damaged. So here it is together. I've drilled a hole in the centre. Now that hole is going to be to drop down a vibrating poker. Now I have actually got a vibrating table, but I know not many people do have that. So these machines you can hire in any hire shop. So I just thought I'd try a different method so you can see how it's possible to do without a table. This is my own mix of factory cement. It's one part fondue, three parts grog, which is crossed fire brick basically. I also add these fibers, which is a combination of polypropylene fibers and carbon fibers. The polypropylene will melt away once it heats up, which allows moisture to escape, which again avoids cracking. Now this cement is mixed incredibly dry. It's very important not to add too much water. When you mix it dry by hand, you get these balls. So I'm sieving it. I'm making. Re I'm paying an awful lot of attention to getting a very uniform mix, a very dry, uniform mix with the added fibres and making sure all the fibres are spread out through the mix as well. Now here we are. We've got it. It's all crushed up. It's really nice, and you can see how dry it is. You don't want to have too much water. Um, it's four litres of water per 25 kilos of mix. But in this case, I've just judged it by hand. I've mixed so much of this stuff over years, I've literally mixed tons of this. So here we go, we're loading up the mould. Um, I've, I'm being reasonably careful just to get it even all the way around so my little dividing bits of plastic don't um, get pushed out of place. But basically I'm just loading in, in the factory cement. You can still just, I, I keep pointing out, it's very important to us just how dry this mix is. And you'll be interested to see what happens when I actually vibrate the mix. Um, it doesn't look as though there's hardly any water in this mix at all, but in reality there is. Um, when you apply the poker, it all sinks down, it all compacts, it can, all, the, all the individual grains compact very tightly and actually forces the water out and the water rises up towards the surface, which you can see what will happen, you'll be able to see it quite visibly. So you turn on the vibrating machine and it just immediately sinks down, I mean literally an inch or two down. I've done it a few times. I didn't video it all the way through. I topped it off a few times. And this is the finished result. You can see how much water has risen to the surface. 